What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this video, we're going to take a look at refs within React. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to actually examine what refs are and how they're useful. So if refs is a concept in React that kind of has you a little bit confused, this is definitely the video for you. Okay, so let's actually take a look at two use cases where refs kind of really shine. So let's take a look at the first one first. Basically, in React, as a React developer, you don't actually have access to the underlying DOM, right? You're mostly just talking to the virtual DOM. And so every single time that you're actually trying to like build like a span or a div or an H1 or any one of those sort of, you know, uh, actual DOM elements, in React, you're kind of using JSX. And what you're really kind of creating is a sort of React element. You're not really creating an actual DOM element just yet. React is the one that's going to kind of sort of make the translation between that, you know, React element and turn it into a DOM element. And the reason why this is important is because if let's say you want to do something as rather trivial as setting focus to an input, right? So if you were just basically creating a simple vanilla JavaScript application, what you might be able to do is kind of have like your input, you know, defined within your HTML file, give it like an ID of whatever. And then within your JavaScript, you can basically use that ID to kind of query select for that particular input. And then just use JavaScript to kind of use call the focus method on it. And you're basically done. However, that focus method doesn't exist within the JSX world. When you're writing a JSX input, you don't actually have the access to the focus method. So that's kind of where refs actually come into play. Using refs, what you can now do is you can kind of give yourself an escape hatch. You can actually take the ref and attach it to this JSX element. And then what you're going to then get a hold of is the underlying DOM node. So whereas JSX doesn't actually have a focus method, but the underlying DOM node, which is just a regular, you know, browser node that represents the actual input does actually have the focus method. Now that you've used the ref to actually get a hold of that underlying DOM node, you can in fact very simply set focus to it by calling that very same focus method. So let me demonstrate that now. Okay, so this is basically the code. Now, before we actually go and test it, let's kind of just walk through and see what we've just done. So as you can see here, I'm importing the use effect and use ref hooks from React. I am then simply defining a simple input that has type equals text. And then here on line six, I'm actually going and creating a ref. I'm calling it input ref and I'm using the use ref hook. So use ref hook basically gives me back an actual ref. Now you notice that within the uh, JSX here on my input, I basically have defined a prop on this input called ref. And then I take this input ref that I've created from the use ref hook and I pass it to this ref prop right over here. Finally, what ends up happening is in my use effect, I basically say, go ahead and say input ref that current that focus. So now this input ref that current, in other words, whatever you actually store within the, within a ref gets stored in the current prop. So if you want to kind of mutate or read whatever is actually stored inside of the ref, you actually have to get a hold of the dot current prop. So every single ref that you're ever going to create using the use ref hook, We'll actually have it in a property called dot current, and that's where you can either, you know, that's where you can either mutate or read whatever values we have basically stored within your uh, ref. So since here, what I've actually done is I've basically used the ref to store my actual underlying DOM node into the ref. For me to actually get a hold of it, I basically call input ref dot current. So effectively here, input ref dot current is now no different than me actually simply using a query selector in regular vanilla JavaScript to get a hold of my underlying in input. This is now the exact same thing here. I've literally bypassed JSX, I've bypassed the virtual DOM. I'm now actually talking to the actual DOM and I now have the actual input of which I can now simply go ahead and call focus. As you can see, I'm seeing input ref that current that focus. Now, the reason why this actually has to happen in the use effect is because this has to, this has to happen after the, the component is already rendered, right? Because once the component basically renders, now this JSX element actually has a real input element that is actually represented within the browser. Because again, here I'm basically just sort of, you know, defining the markup that I want to write. And then React will basically take my markup and then translate that into actual HTML that's going to kind of go into the browser. And that's kind of what the render phase does. And so once the render phase is kind of done, and now we actually have a real input element that's going to be basically put into the DOM, now React can basically say, I'm going to take the actual underlying DOM node that was actually created for you, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to this ref that you basically specified with the name of input ref, which is, which is why this has to happen in the use effect, right? And so here, very simply, we're just going to go ahead and say input ref that current, that focus, and we're basically just going to go ahead and set focus to the actual underlying DOM node. 
So let's see if that actually worked. Okay, so as you can see, I've literally just refreshed my browser. You can see we have the basic input on screen. And as you can see, it has the blue uh, sort of outline around the input to kind of indicate that it's been focused. So another use case where refs might actually be helpful is if let's say you wanna kind of keep a value that's gonna sort of stay around from one render cycle to the next. So for example, let's imagine I come here to my uh, component and I simply define a variable called foo and I set its value to bar, a simple string bar. Basically, what's going to happen here now is every single time this app component is going to go ahead and go through another render cycle, we're once again going to kind of be recreating a new foo variable, and we're once again going to be resetting its value to bar. Now, in this particular example, since I'm actually kind of hard coding the value of what foo is going to be to simply the string bar, it won't really make much of a difference. But the problem still stands that what's going to really be happening is on every single render cycle, I'm creating a new foo and once again reinitializing its value. Now, if I want to actually kind of be able to keep track of a certain value from one render cycle to the next, of course, this is not going to work. Now, I know that I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, OK, very simple. I can just kind of handle that with state because that's exactly what state does. I can just define a, you know, a piece of state using the use state hook. And then whatever I've defined in my state will just kind of, you know, maintain its value from one render cycle to the next. And that is 100 percent true. The problem is. Sometimes the kind of data that I want to hold around has nothing to do with things that I kind of want to render. Typically, state is reserved for things that you kind of want to render. In other words, your JSX, what you're actually kind of spitting out as JSX is usually a representation of my state. Given a certain value within my state, this is what I want the screen to look like. But sometimes I may have values that I don't actually want to go ahead and render on screen, but I still want to maintain this sort of value from one render cycle to the next. And that's exactly where refs kind of come into play. Refs are light to kind of just put values in. And unless if you directly go and mutate the value, it's not going to change or kind of get reinitialized or, re or reshuffled or whatever from one render cycle to the next. So long as this, this component is basically alive, no matter how many times this component is going to go ahead and re-render again and again and again, the actual value that you've assigned to this particular ref is going to stay the same. And so where that might be very useful is the use case that I have actually had at my job. We basically had a real life use case for exactly this. And so the use case basically went a little something like this. We don't want to let a user have a token valid for more than 15 minutes in idle. So in other words, if a user is basically sitting idle for 15 minutes, we don't want the token to basically stay alive. 15 minutes of sitting idle, you basically get logged out. And so effectively what we have to now do is kind of create a sort of uh, client side timer to kind of keep track of like when they first came to the website kind of you know create a bit of a timestamp and then just kind of keep cy cycling every sort of minute or so to kind of see whether or not 15 minutes has already passed and if it has we're going to basically manually log them out of the application let me actually show you a sort of snippet of that in action Alright, so let me uh, walk you through the code and then we're going to go ahead and see if it actually works. So what I've done is I've rewritten my input ref to now be called time and I'm initializing it to date then now. So date then now will give me a timestamp of exactly when the user has first visited this component. So in other words, the app component will basically be the first thing to run when a user actually visits my application. At that exact moment, I want to kind of record when they visit it so that I can kind of keep track of how many minutes have passed since they first visited the application. So therefore, I'm initializing it to date then now. Then I come into my use effect, and then in the use effect, I'm basically saying set interval. We're going to sort of set the interval to run once every minute. So in other words, uh, 1,000 milliseconds times 60, so once every minute. And then we're going to use moment to basically check the time that current. So again, we're going to use the current property that exists within the ref to actually read out the actual value that we've stored. And we're going to go ahead and check to see the difference between time that current and then moment. So we're just going to initialize moment dot diff time that current. Give me how many minutes have passed from when the user has first actually visited our application. And in the event that that is going to be greater than one minute, in which case this will actually be at two minutes, we're just going to do a simple alert you have been here for more than a minute. And of course, in the sort of more real life scenario, where we're actually trying to kind of see whether the user has actually been here for more than, you know, 15 minutes and you kind of want to log them out. It would of course be more logic here because you want to kind of keep track of activity like have they actually clicked somewhere have they actually been moving the mouse and so on and so forth have they scrolled because you want to kind of you know make sure that they're only sitting idly by but for the sake of us seeing that we can actually store values in refs that are not needed for rendering but we kind of want them to sort of stick around for the duration of the life cycle of the component that's exactly what this is highlighting right now so let's see if this actually works right the goal right now is we're going to kind of go back to the application we're going to see the input on screen and then after two minutes, we're actually going to see the alert pop up saying, hey, you've been here for more than a minute. 
Let's see if that actually works. Okay, so with the power of time, we can now see that it says localhost 3000 says, you have been here for more than one minute. So effectively, the set interval has actually been keeping track of when we first joined. It basically kept track of two minutes later, and then it gave us the pop-up or the alert box saying that you'd actually been here for more than one minute. And that is basically what we were able to do using refs. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.